Good afternoon. Welcome to part three of Pain BC's Empowering Self Management of Pain webinar series. Uh, today we'll be discussing pain self management techniques, practice, and planning. I'm Michael Millman, Communications Director at uh, Pain BC, and I'll be hosting the webinar today. Uh, before I introduce our um, presenter, Neil Pearson, I'd like to remind uh, all of our uh, listeners and our audience that. Um, uh, this is not medical advice. It's not intended as a substitute for medical advice. It's for informational purposes only. And uh, so before you begin, cease, or modify any uh, treatment, uh, we recommend that you um, see your health care uh, practitioner. Um, I'd like to quickly reintroduce Neil Pearson. Neil is a physiotherapist, yoga therapist, and clinical assistant professor at the University of British Columbia. Neil works clinically in Penticton, BC, exclusively with people with complex pain conditions. Neil is an international educator, the founding chair of the Pain Science Division of the Canadian Physiotherapy Association, a board member of Pain BC, and the recipient of the 2012 Canadian Pain Society's Excellence in Intraprofessional Pain Education Award. His passion for physiotherapy, pain management, and for teaching pain science is matched by his efforts integrate Western pain care and therapeutic yoga. To learn more about Neil, please visit lifeisnow.ca. Welcome back, Neil. Thank you very much, Michael, and uh, welcome back to everyone who's uh, come on this afternoon. So I'm just going to uh, open up the presentation here. So our plan today is to uh, move on to the third aspect of, of this uh, webinar series, um, as you know, called Empowering Self-Management of Pain. Today we're going to be talking about some of the self-management techniques. Um, I want to talk to you about so, uh, sort of why they would work and the kinds of things that we need to do. Um, there are uh, uh, other resources I'll be telling you about that we can uh, look to um, on some of the other PDC sites and some other sites that we can um, learn some different practices um, and learn some uh, ways to make a, a good plan. To start with what I wanted to do was uh, move into just a quick summary of where we've gotten to so far. We've been talking about uh, knowledge and gaining information because it's so key to, to helping us when we have ongoing pain. So uh, just to remind you that the uh, the pain system is an alarm system um, and uh, when you have these alarm systems on uh, the alarm systems might give you pain, or they might give you muscle spasms, uh, or they might give you weakness, or they could change the way you breathe. So the, the, the protective alarms in our body can do many different things, uh, pain being one of them. Um, and often it does many things along with the pain. We need to remember that when danger messages or danger signals are heading to your brain, they get changed along the way. So if you stub your toe, the, the signals that will go from your toe up to your brain are going to be changed by the time they get there. And how much pain you have is going to relate uh, both to the fact that you stub your toe, but also to how uh, the information is processed along the way. And um, to understand that our own nervous systems can change how much pain we experience. So. So we have sort of these automatic processes that change uh, the danger signals that go through, but um, as well the things that we, we do, the things that we can control with our nervous system um, can change the way the, the pain experience uh, is felt as well. And so on just a little bit more summary, uh, remember pain like vision and every other sensory um, system in your body is, is to provide you with as accurate information as you would want. And that's uh, what we see when we're looking at different illusions, especially the visual illusions. When pain persists, the nervous system becomes more sensitive. So we have this issue that when pain persists, if you've got this problem in your physical body um, and you've got this problem of a, of a nervous system that's become more sensitive than it should be. Um, and we have to say the same thing is for uh, people who have um, things like fibromyalgia, um, is that uh, the problem isn't an injury, but the problem is an uh, alteration of the way the the uh, so the functioning of the body, and that leads to this ongoing pain and the, the, the sensitivity of the nervous system. We talked about how the strategy of gritting our teeth and pushing through pain uh, until we can't continue uh, help us get our life done, but it certainly doesn't help us with getting better, as most of you know, because if that worked, uh, there would be way fewer people with chronic pain. And that successfully recovering ease of movement requires much more than doing exercise. You know, I often hear people uh, being told, you know, you just need to exercise. And, and they say, well, 
I've tried it and it hasn't worked, or I've tried it and it gave us more pain. Um, so we need to find ways around those. And we're going to talk a little bit more today about self-management techniques that will sort of help us make uh, the exercises that we do, the activities that we do, more successful. So the first thing I wanted to show you is a, a model, a sort of a pathway um, that we might go to. Um, in this green uh, diagram you're seeing here, down at the bottom left, you can see it says pain. Uh, when we're in pain, we feel quite small. Um, and where we want to get up to is where we're feeling big again, up in the right-hand corner of this picture, where it says uh, less pain, better movement, and living well. So we want to get there, and not everyone's path is going to be the same. It's not a you know, point-to-point -point sort of thing for most of us. So we've been starting with the idea of starting with some knowledge, gaining understanding. And then after we gain some understanding about uh, how the pain system works and why pain is persisting, um, then what we want to do is move on to starting to do some uh, breathing exercises. It seems that nearly everyone with pain, or everyone I've seen so far with pain, uh, the, the way we breathe when we're in pain unfortunately that reinforces the pain. So we need to start with, with breathing. We'll talk more today about uh, why as well. And then we need to practice a whole lot of things. There's a lot of things that we need to work on to try to help uh, change our, our body and help to uh, change our nervous system and get to that spot where we have less pain and better movement. Um, and so here we have a, a number of different things that we need to practice. Uh, and we're going to go through these today, awareness and self-regulation. Um, the idea of uh, practicing challenging your body and resetting your nervous system, and also this idea of goal setting. So we're going to talk today about um, each of these components. So let's um, go back down to knowledge, which we've been talking about for the last um, uh, two sessions. I just want to remind you to get more of this. Um, most of us need to hear this information over and over and over again, especially because some of it is, is different from what we've thought of before, different what we, than what we've been told before. Um, I know uh, for myself and other healthcare professionals, when we first start to learn this information, you know, sometimes it can take us three or four times to hear it before we really, really start to get some sort of essence of what it means. So there's lots of other resources you can go to for this. You can, uh, uh, every, every BC library, thanks to Payne BC, uh, we were able to put uh, in every BC library one of my books called Understand Pain, Live Well Again. Some more basic information about how how the nervous system works and what persistent pain is about. There's a more, much more in-depth uh, book called Explain Pain. It's by uh, Mosley and Butler, or two physiotherapists from Australia. Uh, now, the only place to get their, their um, uh, book is um, on their website, the NOI Group website. And then uh, also there's a lot more information um, on my website, which is the Life is Now website. There's actually a recording of quite an in-depth recording of um, uh, education about how the nervous system works and pain. Um, if you go to the Pain C website, we've got the Pain Toolkit there that we've put together, which is, is much more extensive. It looks at, at much more than just nervous system uh, aspects of pain. There's the Chronic Pain Self-Management Program uh, through the UVic process, uh, which is a great program. And then uh, we also did, thanks to Pain BC and the Canadian Institute for the Relief of Pain and Disability, we did a, another uh, webinar series. It was called Yoga for People in Pain. And I'll refer back to it a couple times during the session today because it's got some good um, practice sessions on there. And then, of course, you have to look at Pain BC's Facebook page if you're interested in this. There's so much information that gets posted there uh, nearly every day. So we need more knowledge. It's really, really key. If we don't understand about how the pain system works, we won't make the right decisions about what to do to move forward. And then we need to take that knowledge and actually get beyond just understanding it and just how do we use it. So the first place we want to use it is, is coming back to this idea of, of breathing. And, and we talked about how you can take pauses during the day to do, uh, you know, as the diagram here shows, and if you hopefully have a chance to try it right now, of as you breathe in, say to yourself, breathing in, I am calm. And as you breathe out, say to yourself, breathing out, I smile. Now we talked about the importance of trying to find uh, different uh, words to use for this. Um, I know some people have uh, uh, tried playing around with the idea that as they breathe in, they say just this, and as they breathe out, they say is enough. So in their mind, you breathe in, and as you breathe in, you say just this, and as you breathe out, you say is enough. And sometimes words like this can really help to uh, bring some more calmness, um, let us learn better, and also let us uh, um, have less pain. 
So there's lots of different ways to practice calm breathing. Um, when we have ongoing pain, typically our breath starts to feel knotted, like a like a knot in a rope. It's all tight, um, and often what happens is our, our breath feels uh, ragged or ripped. Um, it doesn't feel you know smooth at all, and uh, it feels short. Um, your breath just feels like you just don't have any uh, ability to make it longer uh, at first. But what we need to do is try to practice moving away from these things. And so the words that I would suggest you try using when you're trying to uh, practice calm breathing, instead of using the words deep uh, or the word deep and focusing on belly breathing, which is what a lot of people do, and it's really hard to do for, for a lot of this, you know, that deep breath tends to um, not be as calming as we want and trying to breathe in your belly. If you're good at it, go ahead, but if you're not good at it, then leave it alone for right now and, and try to think of these words. Try to think of making your breath last longer and try to think about uh, making your breath feel softer and try to think about feeling your breath feeling smoother. So give it a try right now. So as you breathe in, as you breathe out, just think about making your breath last a bit longer than it has been. Uh, try to think about making your breath a little bit smoother as you breathe in and smoother as you breathe out. And see if you can get a sense of softness to your breath. Um, rather than feeling ragged or ripped, try to make it feel like there's some softness to it. And I would highly recommend that you try playing with these words, longer, softer, smoother, or, or words something like them. Because a lot of people find that uh, uh, these words work really, really well to help with uh, uh, calming our breath. As I said, if you have a breathing technique that works, then stick with that breathing technique, or you can try this and see if it gives you anything uh, of a better effect. One of the other ways that we can work on uh, trying to breathe calmly is to uh, try to help take our mind off the pain. It can be really hard in the face, you know, hard to breathing when you have uh, fairly big pain. And so one of the ways you could do it as you breathe in, think about expanding your ribs and your belly and your chest all and as you breathe out, think about trying to release and soften each of those areas. So you're making the, the inhale about this active movement of expansion, expanding in your ribs and your chest. And then as you breathe out, see if you can just let go, release, and just let things soften again. And this combination can work really well for a lot of us, although it can be really hard for a lot of us to do, uh, especially in, in, in the face of uh, severe often really, really hard to let go. But give this a try. It's another it's another breathing technique. And I'm sure you'll find other breathing techniques that are out there. There's lots of them. Uh, there's uh, more apps coming up now and other things to uh, try to help us with this. But this is where we need to start with some sort of breathing technique. And you, you might be asking, well, why? Like, is this breathing? You know, what's the point of breathing? And a lot of people think breathing is all about just taking your mind off the pain. So you can use breathing to take your mind off the pain, but what I'd like to suggest to you is that um, it can be effective for much more than this. So you can use breathing to uh, distract you from the pain. Uh, for some people that works and some people it doesn't. But what you also can do is use breathing practice to calm your nervous system. Um, every single time you're doing breathing and you're, you're breathing more calmly, what will happen is in time your body will start to become more calm and in time your mind will become more calm. And when all that starts to happen, you'll actually be able to start to get more calmness in your nervous system. So that's a wound up, cranky nervous system that can be part of persistent pain. You can One of the big techniques you can use to calm it down is, is breathing, just simple breathing. Now, there's another important reason for uh, working on breathing, and that's so you're able to breathe calmly when you try to move again. Uh, we know that uh, um, pain makes, us, makes it hard to breathe calmly, and we also know that if if you have pain and you're trying to move, you uh, will tend to hold your breath even more. Uh, if you try to move in a way that might give you more pain, then you really hold your breath or you start to breathe in this really ragged way. And we know that if you can't breathe calmly while you're rest, it's going to be really hard to breathe calmly while you're active. Um, and so that the, the, the alteration of your breathing when you try to move is actually going to give you more pain. So since we want to move with less pain, we learn how to breathe calmly sort of here while we're in our best position. Then uh, once we're better at that, then we try to use it while we're doing simple movement and then more and more difficult movement. Um, and if you were to, able to uh, look at Pain BC and the CIRPD's uh, websites for the Yoga and People Pain uh, webinar series, there's more information about that there. 
Now, I'm a physical therapist, so if I said, you know, which one of these things in front of us is most important to me, it's the bottom one, because I want you to be able to find a way to move with more ease, um, and I know that if you breathe more calmly, you'll be able to do that. So try again, just another few breaths at this point. Try breathe a little bit longer, breathe a little bit softer, breathe a little bit smoother. And as best as you can, use the words that way, longer, softer, smoother. A lot of times if we try to breathe, uh, take a long breath or take a soft breath, or take a smooth breath, when we feel that it isn't long or soft or smooth or as much of those things as we want, uh, we, we stop, uh, forgetting that it's a skill. Um, so if it doesn't feel long and if it doesn't feel soft and it doesn't feel smooth, then just try to make it a little bit longer, a little bit softer, a little bit smoother, and in time you'll get, get better at this just like any other thing that you practice in life. Now this picture here is to, to uh, show you the kind of thing that can happen when uh, we have persistent pain. Uh, we're getting more and more evidence that persistent pain changes the way we feel our body, our, our body awareness and our body image. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a picture of a, a, a mirror and a fun house kind of thing. And, uh, you know, that may be fun, but in the face of persistent pain, uh, when our body feels like it's too big, too small, or feels fragile, or feels uh, broken, um, or, you know, any of the, the many images and awarenesses that we can have happen with ongoing pain, this causes us trouble. We, we're gaining more evidence from the research that, that pain changes the way you can feel your body. And then when you can't feel your body properly, that that feeds back in and gives you more pain. And so we have this idea that it would make sense to try to try to uh, first check to see, find, become aware uh, of whether you can feel your body properly and then see if you can change it back. And once again, as a physical therapist, to me, it's really important because if you can't feel your body well, it's going to be really, really hard for you to uh, regain movement. Um, our, our whole system relies on sort of sensory feedback of what's happening. So if your brain's not getting information about what's happening in your body uh, in, the, in the best way, then it's hard for your brain to plan movement in a way that won't cause you more pain or that your system won't think is more dangerous. Now, there's lots of ways we can uh, work on body awareness. Uh, you can put your own hands on your body. That's one way to give you uh, body awareness. You could go uh, and get someone else to put their hands on you. So you could do, you know, get a massage. Or a lot of us as physical therapists and nurses and occupational therapists, and um, you know, when our doctors have more time with us, they can put their hands on us, and and that can help us feel our body again. Or like the bottom right hand corner of your screen here, you can uh, lay down, breathe calmly, and then uh, take your time, sort of scanning through your body part by part and feeling the sensations that are in that uh, part of your body. And then uh, in the top right corner here, it shows people doing a bit of a, a movement uh, practice. So when we move, we actually are uh, doing uh, things that will get our brain to pay more attention to our body, to improve our body awareness. So there are lots of different ways to do it, and what we each need to do is try to find ways, uh, find a way uh, to first notice, can we feel normally and then if we can't uh, work on trying to uh, feel it, work on trying to move it and if we can't uh, find a way to feel it on our own then we need to find someone else to help us out. So in terms of body awareness what we need to do is make sure that we can feel the whole front of our body and the back of our body and the right side and the left side and the top and the bottom um, and uh, what we also want to do is try to find a way to be able to feel things inside of our body, be able to feel things like muscle tension um, is a great thing, or to be able to feel when our, our body is in that really worked up state. Uh, because if we can start to notice these things, then we'll know that we actually uh, can change them. We'll be able to feel when we change them. So one of the suggestions that we have in terms of nearly everyone who has uh, ongoing pain is to spend some time every day exploring your body in some way, trying to feel sensations in your body. Uh, remembering that if you can't feel your body well at rest, um, it's really going to be difficult for you to uh, regain movement without that sensation. Now, the bottom point here, it says when you cannot seem to feel body sensations other than pain, uh, you need to keep exploring. So a lot of people you know, give me a funny look when I suggest this. They say, well, why would I want to pay attention to my pain? And uh, what we're actually suggesting is not that you pay more attention to your pain, but that you pay more attention to your physical body. And uh, it's hard to do sometimes. And uh, sometimes what we need to do is 
is try to feel our body someplace where we don't have pain, sort of feel what kind of sensations are there, and then go back to an area of pain and, and see if we can find them there. But remember, this is a skill. Um, if you try the simple body scans and body awareness techniques that are out there and you can't uh, seem to be master it, the first thing to do is just keep practicing. And then if you're keeping practicing and you can't master it, then definitely find someone who can help you with this because it is really important for a lot of people. So go back to that longer, smoother, softer breath just for a few breaths here. And as you do it, see if you can feel sensations in your body. So you're breathing longer, softer, and smoother, and at the same time you're trying to feel maybe your hand or your foot or your face. And if you can feel sensations in those areas of your body, then see if you can take your awareness to an area of your body where you do have some pain. And when you get there, what you probably want to do is just notice how the pain feels for a moment. And then let that go and see if you can actually feel what that part of your body feels like. And sometimes you'll find that it feels like it's it's different, um, that it's harder to feel your body there, or sometimes it feels like it's smaller or bigger or different. Um, but just you know, try to keep on feeling it. And if it happens to be a part of your body that you have two of, like two hands, um, if you're not getting normal sensations there, what you can do is hopefully there's no pain on the other side, Go to the other side of your body, try to feel sensations there, and then go back to the area of pain and see if you can find them there. So it's a, a simple process, but not a simple thing to do. Um, it's a really, really difficult thing to do in the face of uh, pain, and the more severe your pain is, the harder it will be for you to do this. Um, but we, we, like I say, we, we found that it can be really, really beneficial to work on this. So... What I've been talking about is body awareness, but what we know is that um, it's important to spend some time every day uh, becoming more aware of how uh, we're feeling with our breathing, how we're feeling with sensations, but also noticing what's going on in our thoughts and our emotions. And, and using that awareness, sometimes if you just become aware of how tense your body is, that helps you to change it. Or if you come, become aware of how agitated your, your thoughts are, um, that helps you change it. But sometimes you're going to notice things uh, in your breathing, in your body, in your thoughts, in your emotions that you feel you don't have a whole lot of ability to change. And that's where it's useful to get some guidance. Now, go to a healthcare professional who can help you with this. So reminding you back of this picture of this path, of course you see on here it doesn't say psychology or physical therapy or nursing or medical doctor. Um, and it doesn't tell you about specific techniques that we do, you know, the, the massage that we can do or the maybe the needling techniques we can do or things like that. Um, but a lot of those techniques are there to try to help you calm down your pain and there to try to help you to be able to feel your body again um, so that you can then do the things you need to do to get better, which are things that are on, that are on this. So awareness and self-regulation, we've talked about some, and now we want to move on to uh, an idea of how to challenge your body. And once again, on our webinar series, Yoga for People in Pain, um, the last of the uh, webinars was uh, about uh, how to move in the face of pain, and it goes through through this. So if, if you haven't heard this before, please go there. It goes in much more detail. But what we really want to do is we want to say, well, here's what I can do with my body right now, and, and I want to be able to do more with it. Um, but uh, most of us have found that if uh, just by resting, that doesn't let you do more. And, and if you go to the opposite end and you just grit your teeth and push through, that doesn't let you do more. So find a way to go in the middle. So what we typically suggest to people is to exercise at the edge of your pain. So when you're doing your exercise, whether it's uh, stretching or lifting weights or, or uh, being on a bicycle or swimming in a pool or doing Tai Chi or, or yoga, whatever it is, what we want you to do is see if you can... Uh, do your best to do it where there's a little bit more pain. So if you're starting with pain, you're doing it so there's a little bit more pain. And then when you're doing that, you want to make sure that you feel that it's not dangerous to do this, that you feel it's safe for your body, and you want to make sure you feel that you're not going to regret it later. And then while you're doing that exercise or activity, you do your very best to keep your breathing calm, your body tension low, and to stay in touch with the pain. And if you're thinking, wow, that's a lot to do, that's exactly right. And for some of us, what we need to do is just start by go to the edge of the pain, make sure we feel safe and we're not going to regret it later. And just while you're doing it, just focus on trying to keep your breath calm while you do it. 
or just focus on trying to keep your body tension low while you do it. And then as you get better at it, you'll be able to hopefully bring in these other things in time, and uh, that will help you regain the movement. So we need to challenge our body, but we need to also challenge our nervous system in a way. So we want to try to get our nervous system um, to be less sensitive. So the first thing that we want to do if we're going to try to challenge our nervous system is to come back to some sort of activity that actually makes us feel more calm. Now that could be breathing, um, it could be meditation, it could be listening to music, it could be uh, uh, writing in a journal, it could be so many different things, petting your dog, hug, hugging your partner. Um, but we want to start to do this uh, with the intention of trying to calm our nervous system down and see if we can find a way to do these things enough during the day that you get uh, more and more time of calming your nervous system down. Um, so that will help to, uh, in the end, sensitize your nervous system. When you do exercise, one of the other ways that you can challenge your nervous system is to shift your focus in the exercise away from saying uh, that typically we do exercise to, you know, to get our heart better, to get our lungs better, to lose weight, to get stronger, to get more flexible. What I would ask you to do if you're trying to challenge your nervous system, to try to get it to be less sensitive, is while you're doing the activity, have that exactly in your mind. Right? My nervous system, it's really easy to get excited. So what I'm going to do is do this activity in a way that's not going to make it really, really excited. But I'm going to challenge the edge of it. Uh, so I'm going to go to that spot once again where I can feel that my nervous system is trying to get you know, more agitated. And I'm just going to try to stay here and keep everything calm. Uh, so that calm body and calm breath, and therefore you're sending signals in your nervous system to give it a chance to become less sensitive. So that over time, you can do more and more and more. And over time, you can push more into the pain, and over time, you'll be able to do more without your nervous system uh, screaming at you quite so much. So come on back to the longer, softer, smoother breath again. And just once again, try to take some breaths doing that. And if your body's feeling tight right now, see if you can take some of that softness of your breath and sort of shift it into how your body's feeling. And if you can find some smoothness in your breath, you see if you can take some of that sense of smoothness into your thoughts. So if your thoughts are feeling sort of agitated and all over the place and throwing a, a whole lot of information at you, sometimes you can take that smoothness you feel in your breath and, and take it into... Uh, uh, the way your thoughts are working. And once again, if you're trying these things and you're feeling like it's just not working, please keep trying because it is a skill. It does require a lot of practice. So we come back to this uh, pathway to recovery again. We talked about starting at the bottom in pain, gaining more knowledge, starting to work on some breathing, and then starting to practice things. So we're practicing awareness and self-regulation we're practicing challenging our body and resetting our nervous system. But the other thing that we need to work on and we need to practice as well is goal setting. Now, if you don't happen to like the word goal setting, then we can just use the word planning. Uh, in the face of ongoing pain, uh, we're trying to change something that's really hard to change. And, and we know that uh, when we're trying to change anything really difficult in life, we need some sort of plan. So I want to go through with you just a bit of an idea of how you might do that. The first step, I think, for nearly everyone who has persistent pain is to find activities. So the first step isn't to try to really change anything in your life. Um, the first step is to uh, start looking for what activities can I do that will give me some relief from this pain, um, respite from the pain, a break from this 24-hour this day crummy job of, of pain. Um, so we want to try to find the things that, that help us get away from the pain. And then we want to try to find activities that we'll, we feel like when we do them. Um, it's not just about escaping. It's actually um, trying to find a way to stay stay present with what's happening right now and at the same time calm your nervous systems down. And then what we also want to try to do is find some activities that we would, would do, some exercise that we do, the exercise that we want to do, where we can sort of challenge the right the, the edge of the pain. So that's the first step, is to find those things. And the second step is to actually make a daily plan. And your daily plan is to find a realistic amount of self-management to form every, perform every day. So a realistic amount of time that you could spend in respite. 
a realistic amount of time that you could spend calming your nervous system, and a realistic amount of time that uh, you could spend challenging your nervous system. So then once you have this idea, okay, I think, I think that would be a realistic amount, then your next step is to try to, uh, uh, to get that plan done, right? So, so you think you can do this, this then make a plan to see if you can. And so your goal, your first goal isn't, isn't to change anything, your behavior. Your first goal is to see, can you complete these activities every day? And then you move into saying, okay, I found the things that will help. I figured out the realistic amount and tried them out, and yes, they are realistic. I can get these done every day. You know, it varies from day to day, but mostly you can get them done every day. Then you say, okay, now if I can consistently do this every day, what I need to do is challenge what, what I can do. So challenge how well I can calm my nervous system. You know, set a goal of trying to be more calmer when you breathe. Set a goal of being able to move more when you move. So you want to challenge your abilities at this step. But I think for most of us with, with persistent pain, we need to uh, not start at this step. Start back further. Uh, as I said, figure out the things that you can do to give you that escape from the pain. Figure out the things you can do to calm your nervous system and figure out the kind of activities you want to do that would uh, help you challenge your limits for now. So you need to challenge these limits in a realistic manner. And what you want to do is, once you've got to this step, is look for progress every two, three, or maybe even four weeks, realizing this is a difficult thing to change, and it typically doesn't change really quickly. Now, if it did change more quickly than this, of course, you get to celebrate, um, but stick with it, uh, because changes will continue to happen for a long, long time in the face of, uh, of planning and, and ongoing pain. Now, if you've never done any planning before, it's useful to look up um, this acronym, SMART Goals. So SMART stands for uh, Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Time Sensitive. And if you haven't heard those things before, you can just go on to Google and put into Google SMART goals and you'll get something like one and a half to two million uh, websites that actually go through explaining how to do this. And there's some great websites out there that now don't just explain it, but they have processes to guide you through it. We know from research, some great research that was uh, done in uh, Montreal, uh, through Michael Sullivan, that uh, if all you do in the face of persistent pain is learn how to set goals and start to do it in a consistent manner, sorry, in a consistent manner, you will start to have pr improvements in your pain, in your function, and in your quality of life. So we think it would be even better if you stuck that plan in with a broader sense of working on gaining more knowledge. So your ability to set goals and attain them is important for your recovery. If you've never done them before, setting goals before, then get some assistance with this. The other thing that we want to do around planning is we want to imagine success. Now, when I suggest this to people, sometimes they say, oh, Neil, it sounds like you read the book The Secrets, um, you know, because it talks about positive thinking. Um, but what, what I've heard from so many people with ongoing pain is that um, the brain is continuing to sort of play these, these, these movies and tell these stories where you don't get better. There's not a lot of, of uh, sort of automatic thinking um, that includes uh, success and improvement. And we're pretty sure that, that it's, it's difficult um, to get better. Or maybe I should say we're absolutely sur sure it's difficult to get better if you can't imagine getting better. A little bit like the high jumper who uh, looks at that high bar and um, whose brain can just continues to say, you know, you're going to hit the bar, you're going to hit the bar, you're going to hit the bar. Um, the person who can see themselves, imagine themselves getting over that bar, will actually uh, be more likely to be successful. Now, it's not absolute, but it will be more likely to. So you might say, well, how am I supposed to use that in my day? Well, what I would say is with one of these activities that you want to do to challenge yourself, or maybe it's even breathing, um, that you might just, and for a while, imagine yourself being more calm when you breathe, or imagine yourself being able to move more with less pain. Uh, imagine yourself being able to do that uh, movement in Tai Chi or that posture in yoga or um, picking up your grandchild um, and that it actually hurts less than it does today. So you don't have to imagine doing it perfectly and you don't have to imagine doing it with no pain. Um, it just uh, makes sense to try to imagine every single day being able to do something better than you can do right now. And that's uh, um, sort of a, a an extra um, thing to help us move forward. 
And so remember, it doesn't have to be, our plan doesn't have to be really complex. Sometimes we can go back to the simple things like this, breathing in, I'm calm, breathing out, I smile, over and over and over again, um, and then trying to use what we gain there in more uh, difficult things like movement. So beside my, my diagram here, it says everyone needs to find their own path. Right? There's no one path for, uh, for everyone, um, and most of us need to find some guidance, and we need to find the right people to guide us through this, uh, people who can, who can help us with more knowledge, help us to uh, find the ways to, to uh, be able to breathe more calmly, find the ways to practice the things that we need to practice, and the person who will uh, coach us and, and cheerlead us and, and guide us in all these things of, of being able to become more aware of our, our body and our breath and our thoughts and our emotions, uh, being able to find ways to challenge your body and challenge the, the sensitivity of our nervous system to calm it down and to set these, these goals. So although this, this diagram makes it look like it's all up to you, it's not really all up to you, uh, but then maybe from another point of view it, it sort of is. What we can do as healthcare professionals is do things to try to give you knowledge, give you the techniques, um, and help to support you in what you do. But as far as we understand, the, the most important part of uh, pain management is actually the self-management or the self-care things that we do. So if I could summarize this, uh, what we need to do is we need to come up with a, a daily plan in terms of self-management. So you've got a good idea of, of why they would work, why you need to do them, what's happened to your system of why, you know, what's happened to your nervous system with chronic pain, so why self-management techniques would, would be good to do. Once you understand that, you need to have this plan for every day. Um, the plan needs to include some things you do to try to escape or uh, get just get the pain less, some things that you're going to do every day to calm your nervous system down, and some things you're going to do every day to challenge your nervous system. Start slowly. Understand that setting goals and doing these things is a skill, so it's, you're probably not going to succeed completely all at first. Remember that pain changes your body and your breath and your thoughts and your emotions. Um, and many times we're not even aware of these until we start to become, we start actually start to do things around awareness. Uh, it's not uncommon for people to, re to say, well, I didn't even realize I was breathing that way, or I couldn't even feel that my body was so tense there. We need to understand that to try to change these things, um, the best treatments will be address these. So the treatment that we're getting in the face of ongoing pain should be trying to address um, what's happened to our body, what's happened to our breath, what's happened to our thoughts, what's happened to our emotions, because all of these things become important to try to change back to get less pain and better function. So the best treatments are going to try to work on uh, these, and the best treatments are in the end, the ones that uh, you do. So as I said, we can do things to calm your systems down, but well, the whole point of that is try to be able to uh, free you up so you can do the important work that you need to do to get better. And remember, we often need a team. It's a complex thing, this persistent pain, and so often you need a, a team of people who can help you with it. So I'll leave you with this last point. Uh, if you've heard me before, you've heard me saying this sort of thing is, is that uh, pain can be changed. And this isn't just my, my opinion. This is uh, what we're finding from nervous system uh, research from pain science. Uh, movement can be improved. We've known this for a long time, that even in the face of persistent pain, there are ways to get more, more movements. But what we know now is that you can also get less pain. I don't know how much less pain you, ha you can have, and I don't know how much more movement that you can have, but I know it's worth a try. There really isn't nothing to lose. The kinds of things that we're talking about here uh, aren't going to give you bad side effects if you go gently and, and widely with these techniques. So I'm hoping that you'll give it a try. And I'm hoping you'll look at our other webinars and follow the other PainBC uh, information because that will um, support you in, in your path, in your journey of moving forward to uh, recovery, less pain, uh, better movements, and uh, better quality of life again. So I want to just end by saying thank you again to Pain BC for uh, uh, putting this together, and, and thank you, Michael, for um, setting up the day and doing the introductions. It's our pleasure, Neil. I'm just going to.